Richard, I'm no expert on grinding, but you are, I'm, I'm told. Um, this new Chevalier machine here that you've got behind us, it looks, it, it looks very nice, but just tell us some of the reasons why you sold this machine yesterday or so, have sold other machines like this recently. Well, the main reason we sold this machine was that the customer had a health and safety issue with the fact that their current machine they were using was all open and they needed to have the processing closed for safety reasons, grinding wheels being, you know. But can your competitors not offer that sort of solution as well or it's not unique to you, is it? Um, in this particular case, they did have a machine similar, but it was much larger and uh, it was much more expensive. And so uh, we were able to get in there with a smaller machine. The customer basically does small work, but very sophisticated work. Not particularly large runs, about um, 20 off maximum, but their accuracy is really important. They're working to microns, and they um, create, uh, what, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Let me start again. They create, they're doing uh, second ops, which add value to the component, which has previously been turned or milled. Okay, now what I do know about grinding is it's all about surface finish and precision, and that's the, the, they're the key, the two key driving factors. How does the Chevalier machine uh, manage to achieve the best on those two? Well, first of all, by good quality slideways and good quality bearings in the spindle, and by um, ball screw control on all axes, together with linear scale feedback, so that you can maintain perfect accuracy, uh, rigidity, and get a good finish, basically. That's where it all comes down to. And I notice on this particular machine here that you're demonstrating, you have a, a layman fourth axis unit. Um, are you not introducing variables using that that could affect those sort of accuracies and surface finishes? Uh, anything you put on a surface grinder can affect the accuracy. However, the benefits of having a rotary axis means that you can do punch grinding, you can do flats around a periphery, you can do slots, um, you can do everything. You can effectively grind punches for press tools and all that kind of stuff. So yes, there are issues, but providing you um, are very careful about the way you fixture the machine, put fixtures on, line them up and everything, sometimes using plates, you can create something that's easy to take off the machine to put a magnetic chuck on there. And so you've got total flexibility. And you were telling me earlier, before we started this interview, about using that in conjunction with, would, would you class that as your x-axis, moving left to right, yeah. so you can, you can create a, a, an overall better uh, surface finish and more accurate uh, dimension? There are basically two types of grinder that, that we have in the Smart Series. There's a hydraulic version, which where the table, the x-axis, moves left to right, when all your grinding is done, what they call through grinding, so you, you leave the job one side, you leave it the other side, and you grind through. However, if you want to add sort of more relief to the surface that you're grinding, by putting a ball screw on the x-axis, you can actually change the height of the wheel using the um, uh, y-axis while you're moving across in the X. So you can do things like backing off dies and all that kind of thing. So it's, it's much easier than doing it, resetting and doing it afterwards. So there are benefits there. And also, if you're grinding surfaces that are higher and lower on the same, in the same plane, but higher and lower, you can actually go to a certain area of the table, grind just that bit and not run through, crashing into the higher bits and things like that. Obviously, with grinding, you have to be careful you don't crash the wheel into something else around the job. Coming back to the fourth axis unit, if that's rotating as well as the X axis going left to right, you're essentially creating like a lapping sort of finish, aren't you, as well? Uh, yeah, it, it, I think you mean ring grinding. Um, yeah, there is, there, that, this particular customer has a ring grinding application where it, they have to spin the component um, in the sort of vertical mode and then grind through to create a, a, a finish that is not going to allow any kind of porosity from oil if it's used as a seal. So it creates a perfectly flat surface by spinning the component in a vertical aspect and then grinding across that aspect to create that wonderful finish. It's not always necessary, but it, it's, it's useful when necessary. And, and, and those two points I mentioned uh, at the start, surface finish and accuracy, uh, are Chevalier right up there with, with the best when it comes to those two? Oh yeah, they've, um, together with um, their control manufacturer, they've developed SMART, which is a, a, a nickname for being very clever, um, and they've uh, created the uh, special grinding software, which is customised for their uses only, 
and they've um, they've refined it and they've done lots of cycles for grooving for slot grinding for all kinds of different grinding processes all through this smart control and they have the accuracy or the, the, the actual increment value is about one micron in theory, not always possible in practice depending on the way it's fixtured, but generally speaking, you've got ultimate accuracy and perfect finish through good quality bearings and slideways. And that control, I don't, I don't want to uh, finish this interview without talking about it, it's very easy to use, it's got that conversational, can cycles, that's a massive feature isn't it? It is, um, and, it's, and the thing is it's grown with Chevalier. Um, they've developed it together with a control manufacturer uh, and it is a massive advantage, it, it really is. I mean other control manufacturers do make grinding software but I don't think it's evolved in quite the same way as the smart control has with Chevalier as the, the only customer I believe that sells that, that technology. And if someone was looking at this and they, they like the look of the machine but they thought that's too small, just give us a, a very quick indication of how big the, the range is and how many models there are. Okay, the, sadly um, because of um, the old inch system, all the model numbers are derived from inches. So they do, um, this particular machine is uh, an 818, which is eight inches in the cross slide, 18 inches in the, uh, in, in the longitudinal. So they do a 1224, uh, they do uh, a... What's the biggest they go to? Well, <laughs> that's a big question because in the, in the, they do various different types of, the, of motion so they go away from the moving table one to where they have a moving uh, gantry etc so it can go up to three meters uh, three meters long and some of the big machines can go up to 13 meters long but they are completely different in the way they're constructed to what this is they're a bit more like a, a horizontal um, vertical borer well, not vertical but horizontal borer type technology what we're saying here is that anything from this up to up to anything. 30 meters, you, you know, you, you can handle, yeah, can't you? Here it do that. Actually, the smallest, but this is near near the small end, and um, you can go right up to uh, three meters by I think it's uh, four meters wide. So, yeah, quite a large range. Neat, precise, uh, ergonomical, easy to use, and good value for money. Good summary. Couldn't have said it better myself, really. No, perfect. Yeah, we're very happy with the Chevalier Smart Ranger grinders. Perfect. Thank you.